Well, welcome to worship on this unexpected uh, Zoom service. Um, you know, it was, uh, I, I, was uh, I was awake early, but I hadn't really paid attention. I was giving some thought to when I was going to turn my snowblower on. I got a call from Bob Usty at, at seven o'clock and he said, do you really think we should be out in the snow? And he reminded me that it's not just the snow. It is that it was so wet yesterday that underneath the snow is some pretty nasty, some pretty nasty uh, ice. And no matter if we have another option, it is far better for us to be doing this on Zoom. So thank you to Ron Abrahamson and Joanne Schutz. They went over the church to the church this morning in the snow and ice and um, left a message on the door. And I see that most of you got the message and I'm glad that we could be here and worship together. This is a communion Sunday, so if you have not brought uh, any kind of uh, drink or uh, food, uh, my suggestion is whatever would be considered a basic staff of life. Um, you know, it would be bread and water, I think usually for us, for them in their day, it was uh, bread and wine. Uh, anything that is uh, fortifying and certainly healthy for you, not really Coca-Cola and potato chips. Um, I think that the Lord will understand. This is the first Sunday of, of Lent, and together we will worship the Lord. Let us begin with our gathering hymn. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this that calls the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. Bob will lead the call to worship in the non bolded type, and I will respond along with you in the bolded type of the people. So, Bob? Call to worship. For 40 days and nights the rain fell, and the water covered the face of the earth. Lead, Lead us, O Lord, Lord, from death to death life. life. For 40 years the people wandered, seeking the land of God's promise. Lead, Lead us, us, O Lord, Lord from, from death, death to, life. to life. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain, learning the commandments of God. Lead us, O oh Lord, from, from death to life. Elijah traveled 40 days in the wilderness. Hear the voice of God in silence. Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. Jonah cried out for the people of Nivea, repent, or in 40 days you will perish. Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and tested by and was tested by the devil. Lead us, O oh Lord, from death to life. Lord, who throughout these 40 days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sin. Confession of sin. Lord our God, you call us to proclaim the gospel, but we remain silent in the presence of evil. God of grace, forgive us. You call us to reconcile to you in one another, but we are content to live in separation. God of grace, forgive us. Forgive us. You call us to seek the good of all, but we fail to resist the power of oppression. God of grace. Give us. You call us to fight pre pretension and injustice, 
but we sit idly by, endangering the lives of people far and near. God of grace, forgive us. Speak to us in silence, O Lord, that we might summon the courage and strength to be reconciled to you and one another. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Scripture tells us that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who sought reconciliation with us through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, which is to make peace with each other, within our communities and throughout the world. It is beautiful to hear these words, friends. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. forgiven. Hallelujah. Yeah. And amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall. Peace of Christ be with you. And also oh, with you. you. So please unmute yourself. We can say hello to one another. How nice that we're now out in the cold and snow. Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Nice to be inside and warm. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Guys, are you ready? Okay. We have special music for you today, Yay. and that is, uh, it's a return of the Pat and Frank collaboration, and Pat uh, drove over here, and they are in the living room, so I'm going to take you over. Um, we're going to do a song that Pete Seeger wrote in 1955. And it later had a couple of verses added and became one of the anti-war anthems of the Vietnam War. So it's called, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? This one? Yeah. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Pick them, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the young ones gone? Long time passing. Where have all the young ones gone? Long time. Where have all the young ones gone? Gone to soldiers, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Now where are we, Frank? Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time past. Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the soldiers gone? Gone to graveyards, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? <laughs> Where have all the 
graveyard's gone. Long time passing, where have all the graveyards gone? Long time ago, where have all the graveyards gone? Gone to flowers, everyone. When will we ever learn? Excellent. Oh, how appropriate. When will we ever learn? Now it's time for scripture. So Bob, would you uh, take it away? Scripture reading today is uh, from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13, Temptation of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus, Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all of your, your authority and splendor, for it has been given to me. I can give it to anyone I want. So if you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. <clears throat> the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard your, you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all of this tempting, he left him until an appropriate time. And so he left, he slithered out to be hidden until a opportune time. Thank you, Bob. Our In the next couple of weeks, we're going to have an ordination uh, because Elizabeth Green is going to be ordained as a youth elder and the installation of officers. And the way that we do um, this service, many of you have seen it many times, um, is that we um,
during the service, we um, everybody comes forward. They um, they they lay their hands. Some prayers are said. Um, those who are able to kneel, the the ones who are being ordained, we put their hand their hands on them. And that after this is over and the big group breaks apart, we shake hands or offer hugs, or at least we used to, and say, welcome to the ministry. Welcome to this ministry. Well, our scripture passage today, which takes place right after Jesus' baptism. I mean, he had, it, 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 the way it's, well, Luke puts in the genealogy of Jesus, but both Matthew, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell the same story. Jesus is baptized by John in the River Jordan. The heavens are ripped open. The heaven, the, 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 the Holy Spirit descends as a dove, and there is a voice that says, you or this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In a way, it's Jesus' baptism. In a way, it is Jesus' ordination to his ministry. And But God doesn't then shake his hand or embrace him and say, welcome to this ministry. Instead, immediately after the baptism, well, Mark says he's driven out into the wilderness by the devil. Um, um, Matthew and Luke say he is led out into the uh, wilderness by El. It's the it is a the word for the devil is the the diabolic one, diablos in uh, in Spanish, the diabolic one leads him or pushes him into the wilderness. And for what? A 40-day journey? A 40-day probationary period? A 40-day test? And one, well, it's a test. It's an experience. It's something that, that Jesus comes out of stronger than when he entered. The scripture says that by the time he leaves the wilderness, he returns to Galilee in the power. And the word in Greek is dunamis. It's like dynamite. Um, he returns to Galilee in the dynamite of the spirit. Because you see, it's all about power. Who has it? What is it? And in Jesus' confrontation with the diabolical one, we see how Jesus uses power, true power. And in each of the three trials, there are three questions, three trials, um, uh, the, the, the diabolical one, the, the trickster, the devil, Satan himself presents a question about power. First, it's about Jesus's power. The second one is about the devil's own power and ultimately about God's. So first, the first temptation is, it has to do with Jesus. Jesus' feelings that he had been driven out into the wilderness and for 40 days and 40 nights, he hadn't eaten anything. He fasted and he was famished, the scripture says. And what does the devil do? He slithers up and says, you know, if you're really hungry, you could turn one of these stones into a loaf of bread. And even though Jesus is terribly hungry, how does he respond? He responds by citing scripture. He says, one does not live by bread alone. Now, the second temptation, the diabolic one claims, he claims he can give Jesus great authority. He claims it. He says that... Um, that he could offer the prestige within the very empire that John the Baptist criticized. Um, and the, the diabolic one exaggerates his power and Jesus calls his bluff through quoting the Torah, the scripture, yet again. Jesus asserts that the Lord is the only one to be worshipped. The Lord is the only one to be worshipped. And how does uh, Jesus 
And in the third temptation, the diabolic one uses scripture itself to tempt Jesus. He quotes from Psalm 91 and from another Psalm who says, you know, Jesus, God says in the scriptures that uh, if you, he, he will send his angels to deliver you and not even a foot will be uh, dashed against a stone. So why don't you show us how powerful this God is? And Jesus responds by quoting scripture again. He says, thou shalt not put the Lord to the test. Jesus comes out of it stronger than he was before. And he is imbued with this dunamis, this power, this dynamite, not only in his head, not just what he'd been experienced, not just with that enthusiasm, but now it's tried and true and it's in his body itself. I think the fact that the first of the temptations has to do with hunger, it has to do with bodily needs and that Jesus himself suffered as a human being. He felt, he felt pain, he felt uh, hunger pains. He knew what it was like and sometimes I think that we overestimate the physical, the, the actual embodiment of our faith. That, you know, all the stuff we do, we go to church, we go to fellowship events, we put up with some pretty boring meetings, we put up with some people we don't even particularly like, we pray for some nasty characters around the world. I mean, why? We do all this. We read confusing scripture. Um, we do all this because as we practice, as we get used to it, as we become uh, part of it, as we partake of the sacraments, um, that, that, that we are fed with real stuff, um, we are washed, the baby, we're washed with real water. Our bodies are affected. The fact that it, it comes in, it, our faith that we are, we are not just instructed, but we, we're like an athlete that, that does it sort of automatically. And so that when we are confronted, we know both scripture and we also know the right thing to do. It was very impressive to me that um, the first waves of refugees from the Ukraine, most of them have been going into Poland. Um, now there, it is said, I read this morning, it was 700,000 refugees. But as refugees began to cross the border, there were some way stations set up for water and soup and a place to rest, and then buses to take people further into the country where they didn't set up refugee camps immediately because at the beginning, all of the refugees were taken into Polish homes. The refugees were taken into Polish homes. It is absolutely extraordinary. In the same way, in France, uh, during the um, during the the um, Second World War, um, there was a uh, small uh, village in France. There, um, or maybe it won't let you. Second World War. Um, there was a uh, small uh, village in France. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Or maybe I, it won't let you Second World War. I seem to have activated. I'm sorry. In the Second World War, there was a small village in southern France and called Les Chabon. It was a Protestant village in a predominantly Roman Catholic region. Um, and it was a kind of tourist area. But because of the Nazis persecuting the Jews, 
Um, its residents turn their tiny mountain village tourist into a hiding place for Jews from every part of Europe. Between 1940 and 1944, Les Chabons and nearby villages provided refuge for more than 5,000 people fleeing Nazi persecution, about 3,500 of which were Jews. Um, Magda Trochme, the wife of the local minister, explained how it began. And I think this is a really good example of how the answer, the, the Holy Spirit, really leads us and makes us who we are. She wrote, those of us who received the first Jews did what we thought had to be done, nothing more complicated. It was not decided from one day to the next what we would have to do. There were many people in the village who needed help. How could we refuse them? A person doesn't sit down and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. We had no time to think. When a problem came, we had to solve it immediately. Sometimes people ask me, how did you make that decision? There was no decision to make. The issue was, do you think we are all brothers or not? Do you think it is unjust to turn in the Jews or not? Then let us try to help. So it is with this faith that, uh, that Jesus embodies in his own body and that we through the gift of God's love, care, uh, the provision of the sacraments, the reading of scripture, the Christian fellowship, um, you know, we grow into it. And when something comes before us, we know in our body what is the right thing to do. Thank you, Lord, for nourishing us so. Amen. And through these days, no will a chance and through your pleasure to If you have not yet uh, brought your um, something to eat or to drink uh, for the communion service, please do so now. Um, whatever is nearby, I'm sure our good Lord would understand. Um, because we come today hungry for nourishment. We need to be filled. We need to be inspired. We need to be helped um, as we, well, you know, it's sort of like Jesus knew what to say when the devil tempted him. He was so immersed in scripture. He had lived as a faithful Jew. He knew what to say. And so we, too, practice. We learn it. We experience it. So we will know what to do and how to do it. It is a meal that we experience today, a meal, uh, a table fellowship. It references uh, what's in scripture that says that um, in the, in, there will be a great banquet uh, in the heavenly kingdom where everyone who needs, who is hungry will be fed. Everyone will be welcome. There's a famous pa passage in scripture about the beggar's banquet that uh, the um, that, that a, 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 a great master produced this great meal and invited people, they didn't come. And he told his servants then, when the invited guests did not come out, he says, go out into the highways and bay byways, go to the, to, the, to the poor and the lame and the people in need and compel them to come in. I love it. Make them come in. Make them come in and to partake of this heavenly banquet. And that's what we have today. I often describe it as a dinner party, uh, but imagine you are being invited by one of those servants who've been compelled, told to compel you to come in and partake of this meal. Um, it is for we come to the Lord's table. It's not our table. It's not the church's table. It is, well, our 
worship service says that Jesus himself has prepared it. And he invites all who trust in him to partake of this meal that he has prepared. Let us pray. We begin, gracious God, with a prayer of thanksgiving. We give you thanks for the very gift of our lives, for the opportunities to choose your way, for this community of fellowship and love. We thank you for your constant care, your love, your focus, your help. And we give you thanks for this meal, this bread, which is your body, this juice, this wine, this drink, which is your blood. And we remember that you suffered and died for us so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all the possibilities that are before us. Help us, gracious God, to take it seriously and to appreciate the fact that you nurture us during our own journeys of faith, even when we're in exile, even when we're feeling lonely, even when things are tough, especially when things are tough, you help and provide for us. We ask you, gracious God, that you bless these elements, that this bread and this wine would become your body and your blood. And bless us as we open our hearts and our spirits to you so that you might come into our very bodies themselves. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from this time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread that was already on the table. He blessed and broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Whenever you eat this, eat this, remembering me. In the same way, he took the cup that was on the table. He said, this cup is the covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, drink this, remembering me. Friends, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until we, he comes again. This is the food of heaven for the people of God. Let us now partake. Let us now join together in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, as you felt, fed your people in the wilderness with unexpected food, you, so you feed us at this table with a simple loaf and cup. Here you transform us by the working of your wondrous love. Now you send us out to be Christ's body in your broken and beautiful world to bear your good news of hope and grace for all. Amen. Now that we, during this time, our service in the old days, back in the day, we would pass the plate. And if we were in person, we'd pass the, uh, the I always want to call them mosquito nets. No, the, the butterfly nets. And that's when we give um, our envelopes, our money, um, and also we give of ourselves. So let us now reflect upon how God is generous to us 
And in response, we are generous in what God has given us. And then following, and Pat is going to offer us some music again. And after that, we will pray a prayer of dedication. Say something nice to me. I've had a real bad day. Say something nice to me. I love when you say those sweet words you whisper at the lucky twin and gave me goosebumps, baby. Let's try it again. Say something nice to me. Like you used to do. Say something nice to me. Why you think I'm with you? Let us now bow our heads in prayer. We dedicate what we give, gracious God. And even more importantly, we dedicate ourselves to your service for the embodiment of your love in this very troubled world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like us to take a moment now to offer prayer. Um, we actually have some time right now. Um, if, um, if you have a particular prayer you would like to offer, about someone or something, I'd like you to raise your hand and unmute yourself. I'd like us to take a little bit of time. Um, uh, Julie? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I would like to offer prayers for, um, well, all the teachers, but especially um, a friend of mine named Chris, who's really got some difficult struggles right now in uh, being a teacher. So Chris is her name. We will pray for Chris. I heard from Marcia Curley today and uh, she's, you know, a, a um, uh, she's a para, 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 para. and she just says it is so hard. So we're gonna pray for everybody who's working in education and serving in education. And also we were going to pray for all the dutiful daughters who are taking care of elderly well just frank are you trying to have your off yep you'll have to listen to me from here um it won't work in the other room um for the dutiful uh daughters uh and sons uh, who are taking care of elderly, elderly parents. It is not easy. And we pray for uh, the parents who are taking care of children 
Um, it just seems so much of the pandemic has not taken them into consideration. And it may be that because a lot of the people that make decisions about children uh, in policy have enough money that they can pay for daycare and for people to take care of their children and people further down are just having a terrible time of it. We pray for the children who have, you know, I mean, lost two years, two years of educational socialization. Um, I understand it's a little bit like feral children. They, they've forgotten what it's like to cooperate. They are little, they are little monsters in many ways, I love them dearly, but they have to be civilized and they've been uncivil for two years. So can you imagine trying to be in a classroom at this time? So thank you, Julie. Let us pray for those teachers, students, and parents. Are there any other prayers? Please raise your hand. Uh, Robin, please unmute yourself. I just wanted to share a picture because I think you guys remember my coworker and friend who we play, prayed for for about 20 weeks of an incredibly high risk pregnancy when it looked like neither her nor the baby were going to make it at 17 weeks. Um, and I'm gonna hold up this picture. She has like the most oh. gorgeous little baby who I think just turned three months old. Um, she's absolutely gorgeous. And apparently a happy, smart little girl. Chubby. Chubby. She is. She is. Oh. She's just she's just beautiful. So okay. What's her name? The baby's Jolene. Jolene? Joe. J. J. And the friend is Dia. Dia. So we give thanks for Dia. And the lovely gift of Jolene. What else do we have as a prayer? Marianne? I appreciate prayers for my grandson's wife, my granddaughter in law, who's um, expecting him one week. <laughs> in one week anytime so we pray for her what's her name katie what is it katie 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 and all those other expectant mothers oh my goodness are there any other prayers oh julie um well for the people of ukraine and um, I'll just take this opportunity to throw in my announcement um, that the mission committee is collecting money to send to Presbyterian Mission, um, which will go directly to aid the people of, of that are fleeing uh, Ukraine. So if you're interested, just write uh, Ukraine in your, on your check. But yes, make the check out to the church. The P Peace Church has already donated funds drawn from, I believe, my discretionary account. Um, and because uh, the, the money, the, the urgency is very, we wanted, we didn't want to wait. So we have, we have, we, we went ahead on faith and sent $500 to Presbyterian Refugee Assistance um, we have worked with Ukraine in many for many years. We have very reliable people there um, who are involved in councils of churches in cooperative endeavors, and they say the money is really needed. So if you are able to give, um, please do, and either on an envelope, if you have cash, or if it's in a check, just write Ukraine in the message um, line, uh, because the need is very, very great. Um, the Polish people took in so many, but there are, they can't take in 700,000, not that, not right off the top. Um, so there really needs to be, there needs to be help. Are there other announcements? Other prayer concerns? Oh, I wanted to tell you that all of our, um, there are, 
this discussion begins on Wednesday night and um, all the books that were passed out last week are gone. And so what I did was I photocopied the first, the preface and the first, um, the first uh, chapter, which is Palm Sunday. Um, and it's just really good. So I have six copies of those photocopies and I was, gonna, I was asking people to pick them up at church. So I would like a volunteer who lives near the church to offer to go in there and, oh, do I see a hand? I see a hand, who is that? Oh, that's, that's Joanne and Ron. Okay, Joanne and Ron, what I ask you to do is to take the, you'll see, they're very clearly marked, stick them in an envelope and put them on the bench outside of the front of the church uh, at on the Cedar Lake Road entrance. Um, and there are uh, envelopes over in the office by the file cabinet that have a plastic lining to them. And just go and so, and then if you take um, one, or if you, anyone could raise their hands now, if you haven't received a book and would like one, let me know, because I'm happy to order more. Um, and if you are taking a photocopy version this week, this will be the last week that a photocopy version will be available. So if you want a copy, just let me know. And I know there were three people in the early service that wanted them. Um, so if you want them, let me know and I'd be happy to order one for you. It's a really wonderful book. Are there any other prayer concerns or announcements? Well, then let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, this news of war is terrifying to us. And we are aware that soldiers on both sides of the conflict have been sent to engage in warfare, that the soldiers do not make policy, but carry it out. We pray for them. We pray for their leaders, that they might follow in paths of righteousness and give them appropriate instruction. We pray for Vladimir Putin, who does indeed seem here to be our enemy. Be with them, gracious God, and change his mind. We pray for mothers and fathers who must protect their children, who stand in line, who are so frightened. And we pray mostly for peace. We pray for the governments of Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, the United States and the European Union, for the countries of Asia. We are all part of one world community. Help us together to seek all avenues for a peaceful resolution to the current tensions. And may we soften our own hearts and our words in our own communities to de-escalate the tensions that consume our world. Lord, be with us, we pray. Teach us how to be peacemakers and justice doers. We have so much to give you thanks, gracious God. We give you thanks for that beautiful picture of little Jolene. We give you thanks that you brought her, her mother, Dia, through a great period of tribulation and worry. We give you thanks for her good friend, Robin, and all who prayed and cared and care for them both. We pray for Mary Ann's grandson's wife, Katie, who prepares to give birth within a week or two. Be with her as she um, prepares to go through that experience and all the expectant mothers, especially those who are in peril. Dear gracious God, be with them and protect them. We pray for... Um, for Julie's friend and all teachers, for Chris 
during a difficult time. We pray for Marcia Curley, who is an educational worker, who also is caring for her elderly mother. We pray for all teachers, students, decision makers. And we pray for all those who care for elderly parents. And we pray for parents of small children who seem to be disregarded in this policy making having to do with opening and closing schools, maybe the presumption that they are somehow supposed to be able to care for children at home. Oh, Lord, our children have lost so much time in school, so much socialization, so much training and cooperation. Be with them, gracious God, and the teachers who lead them. And we pray, gracious God, for the pastor nominating committee of this particular church, for all churches that are going through transition, and for the church throughout the world. It has been a difficult time, but we strive to hold together through your nourishment and love to make it through a difficult time of temptation, to forsake your ways, to give up. We depend so much upon the community and fellowship of in-person worship and fellowship, but help us to know that no matter what our situation is, no matter how isolated we may be, you are with our very person. We thank you, gracious God, for your blessing, for your care, for your love, and for your sustenance. And we pray in the name of your son, with whom we travel as he turns his face to Jerusalem, as he wanders, as he moves forward into great difficulty, temptation, suffering, and pain. Help us to open our hearts to the message of Lent. Help us to repent of our laziness, our effectness, effectlessness for when we have turned away from your way. We ask all this in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, we now hear the benediction. And that is to go out into the world in peace, to have courage and hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, honor all people, but above and beyond everything else, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the blessing of God, the compassion of Jesus Christ, and the dunamis, the power of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. can stay for fellowship so unmute yourself um those who are need to go feel free to go if you want to hang out come and hang out <laughs>